Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Mustard Seed Leadership Podcast. We're working through a series from Dudley Daniel's first leadership manual called Leading the Church, all in chapter one. We still haven't even finished chapter one. And uh, the series is called Questions to Ask Yourself as a Leader. And we are up to question number eight out of ten. And the question of the day is simply this Are you a faith? person. Numbers 27 verse 18, so the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership and lay your hands on him. Joshua was a man of great faith. His uh, responsibility was to take over from Moses, the mighty man of God, and now lead the people of Israel into the promised land against all of the giants, against all of the enemy forces. And it required great faith, be strong and courageous. And the question is for us as leaders, are we faith people? Are we people willing to take a risk because we've heard God and are willing to step out? So here's a couple of points. Number one, do you see giants or do you see the Lord? Our perspective is shaped by our faith. In fact, it says in Numbers 13, 31 to 33, but the men who had gone up with him, in other words, 12 spies went, 10 of them went with Joshua and Caleb. They all saw the same thing, but their reports were very different. They said, we can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw they are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak came from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. Can you see how they're projecting fear? They're looking through the lens of fear and so everything is now intimidating and frightening them. That's not a faith perspective. The question is, are you looking at your future? Are you looking at challenges and obstacles and problems through the lens of faith or the lens of fear? We need to guard our thinking and talking. We need to surround ourselves with faith, faith people. What we focus on grows. So if you focus on the word of God and what God has said, faith grows. If you focus on the problems, they grow as well. Secondly, then, we should be much more like Joshua and Caleb. Uh, going back a few verses in Numbers 13, 26 to 30, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. He has its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful. The cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Don't you love that? There was Caleb, Joshua's friend, man of faith. They saw the same thing, but Caleb was looking through the lens of God has promised. God is with us. We can surely surely overcome. The filters of faith or doubt make all the difference. So thirdly then, the activity of faith brings God's mighty power into life's situations. Now this is so crucial. Do we want to see supernatural evidence of God at work? Well, His power flows through doors of faith. That's why I sometimes ask people, do you need a natural solution or a supernatural solution to your problem? And they invariably say, oh, we need a supernatural solution. Then I challenge them, if you need a supernatural solution, you're going to need to open up a door of faith. Because Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God is pleased when His men and women trust Him, trust His Word, believe in His character, and step out and take a risk. God responds to faith as we respond to God's Word. It's a critical aspect of leadership. Fourthly, then, a Christian leader must have a quality of faith that is infectious. The God has wired us in such a way that people respond to faith. When they see a leader who's willing to take a risk in faith, they respond to it. They respect to that and they, they respect that and they want to follow it. Hebrews 13 verse 7 says, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. I want to ask you, leader, is your faith worth imitating? Can people look at your life and see evidence of faith and saying, I want to be like that? Because that's what the Bible calls us to. If you are negative, you may cause others to join you, but they will normally do it because they have pity on you or they feel comfortable because they are also negative. They will eventually leave you in the lurch and not walk with you for too long. Fifthly then, faith releases the oppressed, heals the sick, brings the victory and takes back from the devil. Remember, God's grace 
flows through faith. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. His grace, which is his help, his power, his strength, it flows through the channel of faith. So if we want to operate in grace beyond our ability, in God's grace, it's going to flow through faith. This is why being a man or woman of faith is so critical for us as leaders. And then lastly, number six, we must recognize that God is always in control, whatever the circumstances. Remember this, faith is built on your revelation of God, on His character and the revelation of God's Word. This is why it's so important for us as leaders to constantly be growing in our understanding of God and His Word, seeking God so that the revelation foundation of our faith becomes stronger and stronger so that we're willing to step out from there. Hebrews 12 verse 2, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfect vector of faith. I love that. The more we gaze at Jesus, study Jesus, the life of Jesus, the words of Jesus, the more our faith will grow. So there's the challenge. Are you a faith person? Are you known as a man or woman of faith? Now, just personally, I'm not... I'm not naturally someone who's self-confident and I'm naturally someone who would actually veer more towards pessimism than optimism. That's my, my natural background. But what I've discovered as a leader, when I believe that God has spoken, when I feel God's given us a prophetic word, giving us as a church direction or our leadership a challenge, I find it so much easier to be a faith person because it's anchored now, not in my temperament, not in my own personality, but anchored on the word of God. And that's my encouragement for all of us. No matter what kind of temperament or background you have. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. As leaders, we owe it to the people we lead to be listening to God, hearing His still small voice as He speaks to us from His Word so that we can stand strong and lead with faith. So here's a couple of questions I want to leave you with. Number one, take a moment and reflect. Does your life reflect a bold, risky faith? Could people accuse you of being a man of faith? He takes risks because he believes in God. Secondly, can you recall times when you have felt that God has spoken to you and you have responded in faith? When you look back over your last couple of years, can you look at incidents where I felt God say, and so he did this. I felt God impress this upon me, and so he did that. Do you have a testimony? of faith as part of your background. And then thirdly, what has God been saying to you recently and what are you doing about it? Right now, take a moment. Are you responding in faith? God could be speaking to you, highlighting things. Are you just storing them away in your mind or are you actually putting them to work, stepping out and being a Joshua and Caleb who walks in to the promises of God? I hope that helps. This is a challenging one for me, but so critical for us as leaders. Are you a faith person? Next week, we're going to be asking this question. Are you a speaker of the word? I'm looking forward to that. So until next week, may the Lord bless you. I hope this is helpful and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like the notes that come along with this episode or any one of our past episodes, you can visit outlookchurch.co.za forward slash mustard seed leadership. You can see all our past episodes, all the resources and notes that go along with this. Until next time, keep growing.